Welcome to Bridges Grade 2, Lesson 2 for the week of June 1st through June 5th. So now let's look at the outcome for today. We're going to subtract three digit numbers by using multiple strategies in order to solve word problems. Let's take a closer look. So we're going to subtract or take away three digit numbers, numbers that deal with hundreds, tens, and ones by using multiple strategies in order to solve word problems. So we're going to be using different strategies to solve word problems or story problems that you go ahead and read. All right, so now let's think about it. Here's a question for you. Would you rather have 364 jelly beans and give 188 jelly beans to your friends? Or would you rather have 281 jelly beans and give 137 jelly beans to your friends? Think about that one. Put your answer in the dialogue box on your Schoology page of Think About It. Okay, so now let's learn about it. We are going to take three digit numbers and we're going to see how we can subtract those numbers through reading story problems. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to read the story problem with me as I read it. Beach balls have become so popular that they that the toy store has only 37 left. They order more in a hurry. After the truck makes its delivery, they'll have 190 beach balls. How many are there in the truck? So let's go ahead and take a look at what we know from this. We know that the beach balls are super popular and in the store there are only 37 left. So we see that we have our 37 beach balls in the form of three tens. So 10, 10, and 10. And then we have these individual beach balls, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know that we have 37 beach balls. And I just wanted to write that out for you so you saw. They're going to get a truckload. And after they're done with the truckload, they're going to have 190 beach balls. So they're starting out with 37 beach balls in the store. They're going to end up with 190 beach balls. So what we're looking to find out is how many beach balls are coming in that truck. So we know the beginning number is 190. I mean, it's th sorry, 37. And we know the end number is 190. So to find the number that's in the truck, we can have a subtraction problem. And there's two ways we can go about subtracting. We can start with the end number, 190, which is our larger number. And we can take away the beginning number, 37. And we can find out what is in the truck that way. We also could do a starting with our additional or our beginning number 37 and we can figure out what are we adding to 37 to make the 190. So just because we are subtracting in this case doesn't mean we have to subtract because we know that subtraction and addition have a relationship to each other. So even though we are subtracting we can turn that subtracting problem into an addition problem this way. So we're going to look at three strategies here to help us. And the first one is by using a drawing. So we're going to start with our number 190 and we are going to draw it using our place value um, drawing examples. So here we have our flat or our mat, which is 100. And then we have our rods, which are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and 90. So each of them is worth 10 and I just counted by 10 to get 90. So that is our 190 right there. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase those because I'm going to do something different here and I just want to make sure that I have enough room. All right. So what we're doing is we're going to subtract. So when we subtract the number 37 from 190, we are taking away. So there are no hundreds to take away, so we're going to leave our hundred just like that. So we're going to break down 37 into 30 
plus 7. So I'm going to take away or cross out 1 10, 2 10s, and 3 10s. So these 3 10s are now done. We're finished. They're gone. Okay? Because I took away 30 or 3 10s, which is 30. So that's finished. So now we have to take away 7 1s. But I don't see any 1s there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 10 right here and I'm going to break it into individual units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that 10 is broken into individual units. So now I can take away my 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What's left over? 3. So now we've got to go ahead and see what we have left. We definitely have 100. And then how many 10s do we have? We have 1 10, 2 10s, 3 10s, 4 10s, 5 10s. So we have 5 10s or 50. And then how many 1s do we have left over? We have 3 1s. So if we add these together, we have 153. So when you're subtracting using a drawing, all you're going to do is start out with our large number, or the number that we know we have at the end in this case, which is 190. And then we're going to take away or cross out the number that we are subtracting. In this case, 30 and 7 that we broke down to 30 plus 7. If you don't have any 1s, you can always take a 10 like we did here and exchange it for 10 1s because remember, 10 1s makes 1 10. And then you can cross out the 1s like we did with leftovers. All right, let's go to the next example. This time we're going to use a number line. Okay? So we're going to take our, we're going to go ahead, sorry, we're going to go ahead and we're going to reverse and we are going to start with 37. We're going to go ahead and look at how we can add up to make 190. So we know that there are 37 beach balls in the store right now. We know a truck's going to come and add some beach balls and give us 190 total. We just don't know how many are in the truck. So we can start here with the number 37 and we can add up until we hit our number 190. So when we're adding, we always want to get to numbers that were easy to use. And it, like I've said before, we want to use numbers that end in a 0 or numbers that end in a 5. So in this case, 37 is very close to 40, and 40 ends in a 0. So we're going to go ahead and add till we get to 40, which will give us 3. So we're adding 3. So we've already added 3. So that's a number that we've used already. Okay. Now we're at the number 40. Now I know for 40 to get to 100, I have to add 60 to it because I know 6 plus 4 is 10, so 60 plus 40 would be 100. So now I'm going to add 60 to 40 to get to 100. So now I have 3 plus 60. Now I'm at 100. Oops. Now I'm at 100. So what am I going to add to 100 to get to 190? Well, I'm going to add 90 plus 100 gives me 190. So I've broken this down into three parts. 30 plus 60 plus 90. And if I take all those together, it's going to give me 153. So my problem will look like this. 37 plus 153 equals 190. So that's how I can use the number line to go ahead and solve that problem. And finally, we're going to talk about front end subtraction. So I have 190 balls in all. I know that's what it says here at the end of my problem. I start with 37, I add some number and I get 190. But I have 37 balls to start. 
So I'm going to go ahead and subtract those numbers, but I'm going to start with 190 and take away 30 of those. And the 30 comes from the 37. So 190 minus 30 is going to give me 160. So now I have 160. But I've got to go ahead and I've got to take away the 7. So 160 minus 7 gives me 153. So again, if I have 190 balls in all at the end after the truck comes, and I take away the 37 balls that I start with in the store, I can say 190 minus 30 gives me 160. And then I can say 160 minus 7 gives me 153. So I know the truck is bringing me 153. So those are three strategies that you can use to subtract problems when you see a story problem that involves subtraction. Remember, you can do it in two different ways. You have three strategies, but you can do it in two different ways. You can have a subtraction problem where you find out what's missing, or you can do addition by starting with a number and counting up to the number that you have at the end. Now it's your turn to try it. Take a look at these four story problems. You'll see them on your Schoology page. I want you to complete these story problems using the strategies that you just learned. Remember, there are two ways to go about looking at these story problems. One, you can download the Word document, show your work, take a picture of it, and send it to your teacher. Or you can click on the turquoise puzzle piece with the assignment Go through each problem, use the pen tool to show your work, and submit to show your teacher directly on Schoology. Either way, this is your chance to practice. Now it's time to show us what you know. Take a look at these three story problems, and your job will be to answer the story problems using the strategies that you practiced on the Try It and learned in the Learn About It. Remember, there are two ways to go about showing us what you know. You may download the Word option, show your work on a piece of paper, take a picture and send it to your teacher, or you may click on the turquoise puzzle piece that says show what you know, and you'll see the same problems where you can answer the problems directly on Schoology using the pen tool and submit to your teacher. Be smart and show us everything that you just learned. And as always, good luck. Ask for help from your teacher during your classroom meetings or your Google Meet times. And keep working on your math. Remember, math is all around. You just have to find it.